a very good morning to all of you uh, respected director uh, of cooperative academy of professional education dr shashi kumar sir uh, honorable chief guest of the day and registrar of uh, kerala technological university dr praveen our beloved principal dr k g vishnathan sir uh, hods of various departments departments of uh, college of engineering kidangur staff members and uh, dear uh, participants sir a very warm good morning to all of you uh, today we are uh, what is organizing this uh, uh, fdp on modern trends in uh, civil engineering and construction industry uh, this pandemic situation has in fact uh, made the uh, fdp online fdp Uh, far more effective than uh, uh, the regular face to face fdp because uh, of various reasons firstly in the case of a face to face fdp the reach is uh, maximum 30 to 50 here uh, we have uh, as it is already mentioned more than 160 participants uh, from the length and breadth of the country starting from uh, Uh, jammu kashmir to tamil nadu and maharashtra to the eastern uh, states of our uh, country like west bengal assam and all there are participants so the reach is uh, uh, extremely high when compared with the uh, what to say the uh, regular face to face fdps also there are no restrictions uh, on the resource persons uh, Uh, their geographic locations and all these are not uh, a limitation in this uh, situation though we have a lot of limitations in this pandemic situation as far as uh, education uh, uh, is moving to the next phase uh, this has been a beginner or a starter i believe because uh, the uh, lethargy for uh, accessing the online uh, uh, resources uh, uh, has come down to a great extent uh, as far as the faculty members are concerned or as far as the students are concerned i think uh, the time is ripe for a, a revolution in educational sector with uh, uh, what to say the best courses available uh, in the online platform uh, and with the new education policy that is uh, being rolled out by the central government uh, it is uh, very appropriate uh, that uh, the education takes uh, a new turn at this juncture academic uh, bank of credit uh, is another innovative idea that has come into being wherein uh, the programs are really becoming choice based and flexible we used to use these terms choice based flexible and all uh, uh, in letter but uh, actually they were uh, very less choice based and very very less uh, flexible actually in this uh, uh, new scenario uh, when this abc and all gets introduced uh, it becomes really choice based and it becomes uh, uh, really flexible in fact okay you have uh, the opportunity to do the uh, courses offered by the various uh, universities outstanding universities uh, uh, of the world that uh, in a way becomes a uh, equalizer or a leveler uh, in the education sector where only the privileged few had a uh, opportunity to access uh, these uh, high level uh, programs of uh, highly uh, popular institutes actually now uh, this will uh, give access to uh, everyone almost so this uh, uh, comes as an equalizer in the education sector and it is a great step forward and i think uh, the educational leaders uh, it is time for them to think whether we should uh, continue in this uh, face to face mode the entire education or it should be in a blended mode like okay people or students should have the uh, freedom uh, to do some of the courses sitting in the comfort of their house uh, every day should not be hectic uh, traveling and coming to the college uh, getting ready at a particular time uh, you do your courses at your own convenience at uh, your own convenient places uh, that should be the new order of the day i i believe this uh, pandemic situation has uh, opened uh, the door uh, for all such uh, possibilities uh, i believe uh, uh, this is not going to be 
uh, this may be a temporary setback only for uh, uh, our nation this is uh, we are going to emerge uh, much more stronger from this crisis uh, uh, in the coming years and we are going to be definitely a technological uh, leaders of the world with the education sector opening up and uh, knowledge becoming accessible to all i uh, believe uh, this is a great initiative by aict to organize uh, uh, such programs in the online mode and i am sure the purpose uh, uh, and the intentions behind all these uh, will more than be saved uh, by these fdps now let me come uh, to the duty of uh, welcoming uh, the gathering first of all uh, let me welcome our respected director uh, dr r shashikumar sir who in spite of uh, having a uh, uh, lot of other things to do regarding the 10 engineering colleges uh, that is he, that he is heading and constantly toiling uh, to upgrade the standards uh, Uh, he has consented and he has become uh, an inspiration and motivation to all the uh, people attending uh, this uh, uh, fdp on behalf of uh, civil engineering department college of engineering kidangur uh, we welcome you uh, to the uh, fdp sir next i would like to welcome our uh, registrar of uh, apj abdul kalam kerala technological university dr praveen uh, to this uh, uh, inaugural function of the fdp in spite of his uh, occupations at the university with uh, uh, various issues uh, he has made himself available for this uh, uh, fdp i uh, welcome him uh, wholeheartedly to this uh, inaugural function next i would like to welcome our beloved principal who is the motivation and the force behind all these uh, is the person uh, who corrects uh, all that is uh, wrong in what we do who encourages us uh, to do what is uh, right and good uh, who takes the institution to its uh, uh, present heights uh, we all heartedly welcome you sir to this uh, inaugural function okay uh, next i would like to uh, welcome all the heads of departments uh, of uh, various departments of college of engineering kidangur the staff members uh, who have uh, uh, joined this program uh, uh, inaugural uh, session of this uh, fdp we wholeheartedly welcome you all to this uh, program last but not least it is the participant and their participation which uh, makes a uh, fdp successful we uh, wholeheartedly uh, from college of engineering kidangur department of civil engineering we wholeheartedly welcome you all to this uh, fdp we expect uh, that uh, you will have a uh, uh, what is a great and uh, uh, enjoyable learning experience for the coming 5 days uh, uh, welcome you all to this uh, uh, fdp thank you thank you one and all thank you matthew sir for the welcome address now i like to invite professor apopi fdp coordinator Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, for briefing us on about the FDP. Over to you, Apu sir. Thank you, Prithvi. Is it audible? Audible, audible. Morning, one and all. ACT Training and Learning Academy Atal facilitates through trainings and workshops to upgrade the knowledge and skills of faculty, researchers, and professionals from industries through their affiliated institutes. As part of this, Department of Civil Engineering, College of Engineering Kedangur has got an opportunity to conduct this FDP on modern trends in civil engineering and construction industry 
starting from August 2nd to August 6th. This FDP is being coordinated by our professor and the head of the Department of Civil Engineering, Dr. B.B. Matthews. The aim of this training program is to update the latest studies going on the various areas of civil engineering and the modern trends in the construction industry. This will provide an opportunity for the participants to interact with the experts from academia as well as industry and will motivate the participants to know more and carry out research in the areas like building information modeling, drones applications in civil infrastructure development, modern materials in highway construction, etc., where a lot of new developments are taking place. Total 162 participants from various states of our country has registered for this program. We have arranged 15 sessions for this FDP, three sessions per day starting from August 2nd to August 16th, 6th. And we are also blessed with the eminent resource persons from IATs, NATs, and also experts from construction industry, especially from foreign countries. So it is a great opportunity for us to interact with such eminent person. And also we are expecting and a better outcome after completing this FDP. So thank you all and, we, and I wish all participants for your success full completion of this FTP. Thank you. Thank you, Apu, sir. For giving us and giving us an insight about our FTP program. Next, I take this opportunity to invite our respected principal, Dr. K.G. Vishwanathan, sir, to deliver the presidential address. Sir has been the principal of College of Engineering Kedago since the year 2015. He's a driving force and a constant source of inspiration for all of us and the major reason for our NB accreditation. I take this opportunity to welcome you, sir, to, to give the presidential address. Thank you. Respected director of CAIL, Dr. Sesh Kumar R. Respected registrar of APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University, Dr. Prabir A. Professor B.B. Matthew, head of the Department of Civil Engineering, co-coordinators of the program, Professor Bindya Hari, Professor Appu, other colleagues from Civil Engineering Department, heads of departments and other faculty from other branches of College of Engineering, Kittangur, dear participants from all over the country. A warm welcome to College of Engineering, Kedangur, Potem, Kerala. College of Engineering, Kedangur started well in 2000, 2000, uh, 2000 itself. Among some nine, among some eight colleges under the Cooperative Department, Government of Kerala. All these colleges comes under the common banner, the common umbrella, Cooperative Academy of Professional Education, K. There is a mushrooming of self-financing colleges in 1990s and old. And before that, in Kerala, there were only government engineering colleges and government aided engineering colleges. So to bridge a gap between these two types, to these two entirely different types, one, purely government and the other one is purely self-financing. Government took initiative for starting different types of uh, colleges and one such initiative is Cooperative Academy of Professional Education. In 1999, the first colleges started in uh, Wadagara, Kerala, and after that, many colleges came like that. Now, it's our 21st uh, year since we started the course, and uh, we have four engineering programs, four BTEC engineering programs, and two MTEC engineering programs in our institute. And this year, we are going to start a new BTEC program, which is electrical and computer engineering, which is in the emerging area in engineering. We got ISO certification as well as two of our programs, the first department, civil engineering, as well as computer science engineering, got accredited by NBA, one year back. As Professor Matthew mentioned, among this COVID pandemic, the problems of COVID pandemic, 
there is very less stands for personal one to one or face to face interactions even then it provides an opportunity for interacting with lot of people not within our country or with, within our state within our country or throughout the world there is opportunity for interaction with that one so that type of uh, provisions are uh, uh, mechanisms are there for interacting with all the persons so that's why this program is a national faculty development program as uh, the uh, matthew and rapu mentioned there are 162 participants only 10 participants are from, uh, from college of engineering kidangur 46 participants from all over kerala the remaining 116 participants is from outside kerala some uh, starting from jammu kashmir until tamil nadu like that so it is possible only because of uh, this growth of technology as well as vision of aict i would like to say that we are losing the chance to interact you or to see you or to uh, to communicate or to transfer our knowledge in person to person and uh, we are sorry that we are losing a chance to visit the god's own country as well as god's own country kerala as well as this particular city, uh, particular place kidangu which is a part of kottayam which is famous for three l's it is known as three l's lettuce lakes and latex so sorry you are losing the opportunity to see the scenic beauty of our campus as well as uh, the beauty of the land kottayam even though we can say 162 participants are participating in this particular program otherwise there will be only some 30 participants usually that was the restriction for all the faculty development program when uh, isd or acd were conducting those types of programs but the restrictions was maximum 30 to 40 participants and out of which only 10% from the host institute that was the condition so those conditions are over so we can interact with the uh, different faculty members we are not troubling you in through all these places to kerala from kashmir to kerala it is not that much easy to travel so we are avoiding that type of situations so that is a positive side of uh, this present situation i already mentioned that is a national uh, faculty development program and it grown it already grown to the size of international scenario so you can see that if you are looking at the uh, uh, experts or the resource persons who are addressing this gathering you can see that there are 15 experts and uh, there are uh, uh, two from united kingdom or london or britain both of them are post graduate students they are giving a good guidelines or good uh, uh, introduction into the various research areas of uh, civil engineering one from singapore one from in the uh, indonesia seven from from seven talks are from industrial experts and academia includes iit mumbai nid calicut and many other institutions so this type of dimension is there for an international dimension is there for this faculty development program usually all the civil engineering departments i am not saying about my own civil engineering department but uh wherever there is a civil engineering department there is that is a special one that is a feeling my personal feeling is like that civil engineering department means it is a special one it's having a structural ap approach for uh, for all the problems a systematic way of uh, teaching and learning process as well as the processes our department our civil engineering department is is, is also not an exception they are doing it in a very particular very systematic way so that's why you people to the participants are uh, very lucky to get this much of uh, 15 experts from various parts of uh, uh, parts of the world within a limited time of 5 hours i take this opportunity to congratulate the, 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 the very much the systematic or uh, the, the, the herculean task taken by the head of the department professor dr b v matthew as well as the coordinators the co-coordinators is bindya hari as well as apu the other members of civil engineering uh, department they are also taking a good uh, good initiative uh, in conducting this uh, this one 
can see our ad hoc faculty, uh, Christy, Jerry, and uh, others are also very strongly participating in that one. I once more I'm congratulating each one with this. And uh, when you are coming to the program, you can see that, as Apu mentioned, ACD is in endeavor to encourage academic excellence. It has taken an initiative. That's what is known as ADAL. ADAL, ADAL means it is AICT Training and Learning Academy. That is to conduct various faculty development programs for upgrading the faculty, faculty knowledge. This year, ACT is organizing 1,500 such FDPs. And 47 of such FDPs in various areas are commencing today. And you can see that, or you can witness the inaugural function that is by Professor Abhay, Abhay Karandikar, as the director of IIT Kanpur, is going to inaugurate this, this 47 FDPs today at 11 a.m. You can also witness that. So there will be a break at uh, 11 a.m. for this type of inauguration. And uh, while coming to this program, you can see that they're, they're using a, uh, a wholesome approach in for, for, for covering all the branches of civil engineering and the modern trends in civil engineering as well as construction industries are revealed in this five, five day FDPs. You can see that there are uh, papers from structural engineering, construction engineering and management, transportation engineering as well as traffic management, different sustainable sustainability issues in the construction and uh, related industries. And uh, you can see that industrialized construction, they're introducing what is meant by industrialized uh, construction, what are the different ways of that. Digital construction, that is another topic, and then Applications to drawn in civil engineering as well as construction management. That, that's also going to discuss along with that some, some uh, research oriented topics uh, are also discussing in, uh, during this five day 15 sessions. Uh, I'm not going into much details of that. Even then you can see that uh, the, uh, uh, the structural health monitoring system that is the process of utilizing damage detection for critical structures like bridges and uh, uh, dams, tunnels. So you can just be observed a tunnel. The Kerala people are knowing about that. In August 1st, our Kudiran, that is in the way from Trishur to Palka, one tunnel is inaugurated. And another another tunnel, big tunnel in Jammu Kashmir, uh, that's also uh, uh, Madhya Pradesh. Uh, we can see that there is a adult tunnel that is in kilometers. Many kilometers are covered in that one. So what are the different types of structural health management system in that one that's uh, covered in the first session after after the uh, inaugural session or the keynote speech by your respected uh, respected registrar of Abdul Kalam Technological University, Praveen K. After after his talk, that is going to come. After that, there are different types of uh, uh, sessions like construction, uh, uh, then assessment, different structural assessment methods. There is for non-destructive testing methods. There are different types of uh, what is the traditional idioms of construction industry that is covered by the great Patmasri Sangar. He is a very well-known architect. He is going to handle one session there. Then different sustainable practices of construction industry. That is practices that are environmentally responsible and resource efficient, efficient method. That is also going to cover there. There are clean ways. What are the lean ways of construction management? Actually, lean, uh, the, the principle comes from, that is from Toyota industry. But later on, how can we do that? That is by, by, by maximizing the value to the customer. And how can we customize or how can we reduce this? That concept is going to discuss there. Then after that, different other, uh, the other like uh, industrialized construction, digital construction like that. That is, the trend is changing. We are not uh, doing everything in the construction, the site of the construction itself. Instead of that, we are making it in a, in a manufacturing, in, a, in an industrial atmosphere, joining join it, and then transport it to that. So that type of techniques are coming there. Then highway construction, what are the things to be come there? Like that. Then finally, the drones. Drones are the, the latest in the COVID period and all, for inspection and all, 
people, uh, uh, the health department people as well as police, they are using drones for assessing uh, the different areas. The same thing is the for construction industry also. Uh, the drones will provide a vast amount of spatial data. How can we manage that? What are the different problems there? So that type of things are also there. Along with that, what is the situation in Singapore and the construction and uh, uh, structural, structural area? There's a section like that. Like that, this particular FTP covers almost the breadth and uh, width of all the like of the entire civil engineering. It is covering all the modules of civil engineering. And once again, I am uh, taking this opportunity to congratulate the team of civil engineering for organizing this uh, this one, this particular session. And uh, since it is an online one, there is many chances for skipping the sessions just by switching on your devices like laptops and mobile phones and doing some other activities. Don't do it like that. As a principal, as a senior person, I, am, I have an advice to you. Don't waste your time in doing it like that. You got, an, got, a, got a golden opportunity to, to, uh, to enhance, to update your knowledge in all the areas of civil engineering. Use it properly. Make the time useful. I am wishing all the participants a fruitful five days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vishwanathan, sir, for your thoughtful and motivational words. To welcome, to welcome is to show honor. To welcome is to establish integrity. Now I invite Dr. R. Sashikumar, sir, Honorable Director, Cooperative Academy of Professional Education, K, who has undertaken numerous duties and responsibilities in the college level, university level, in the government level, and others. I feel privileged to invite Dr. Sashikumar, sir, to deliver the inaugural address. Over to you, sir. Good morning. I hope that you can hear and view or see me. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. First of all, I I am very much grateful to the College of Engineering Kidango for inviting me for a inaugurating this function. Dr. K. G. Vishwanathan, the principal of the college, Dr. Matthew, head of the Department of Civil Engineering and the coordinator of this program, Dr. A. Praveen, chief guest of the day, is my old colleague as well as uh, the registrar of Kerala Technological University and uh, co-coordinators, uh, Ms. Bindia Edi and uh, Mr. Apu, Faculty of Civil Engineering, all heads of the departments and the participants from various parts of our uh, country. That is, 162 participants are participating in this program. I am also grateful to AICT, All India Council for Technical Education. They are promoting so many activities. Atal is actually a, one of the very important activities of AICT for enhancing the knowledge of our faculty members. And they are giving training and also they are giving a quality learning process. They are promoting the, our faculty members to participate in such programs through ATAL. AICT training and learning process, actually. This is one of the schemes where AICT is taking or very importantly given to the faculty members. Similarly, there are so many other programs like uh, we can say uh, IST programs also there for promoting our faculty, for encouraging our faculty members for uh, updating their knowledge, etc. So we are also grateful to ACT teams for uh, entrust our College of Engineering, Kidangur, for uh, conducting a program like this. Our participants, we can see that we are getting an ample, we are getting a very good opportunity to share your knowledge with uh, our civil engineering faculty members all over our country. This is though so we are thankful to the pandemic situation. 
That is why we are thinking about conduct a program like this and on sixty two participants is participating. Out of that, one hundred and sixty participants are from outside Kerala. It is also very very interesting, and you are getting very good opportunity to interact your knowledge and to share the knowledge and also understand what are the different uh, modern trends. Sorry, mm. can you hear me? Yes, sir. No, it, yes, sir. No, okay. okay, it is okay now. Yeah, yeah. yeah there okay. is a phone call is coming. That is a problem. Uh, okay, okay. So I am. Um, so we can see that you are getting a very good opportunity to uh, discuss various research areas uh, in the uh, in the field of civil engineering as well as construction industry. When we are thinking about the modern trends. The scenario when when I was a student in 1982, there are when we are comparing that curriculum and that period and today's curriculum, there are so many changes we can see. In 1980s, we can say we are using third theodolite for a survey process. That is the most precious equipment at that time. But it is totally replaced by total station now. It's very costly. Theodolite is also very costly at that time. Now it is totally replaced by the total session for survey process. Similarly, the material changes. Usually we are using river sands for construction purpose. And this river sand is totally revised by M sand or it is replaced by M sand. M sand is actually a product of our own state. It is uh, developed by College of Engineering at Trivandrum, and uh, it is very popular in construction field now. And construction management itself, we can see, it's a planning is very important in any construction process. We usually use our um, bar chart for planning process, very old days. Now it has changed. We are using management tools like uh, we can say CPM, PART. Like that, tools are we are using for scheduling of activities for any construction process. If you have properly planned your activities in any construction process, definitely you can save time. Then see, once you save your time, we can say that you are actually saving money. And the construction rate is also changed a lot. In India, we are using Delhi rates. And uh, using softwares, we are actually making our estimates, budget preparation, and feasibility studies. We are using different types of software. Slowly, we are moving from technology towards the digitalization process in civil engineering. Global positioning system we are using in the construction field, and also another different areas are that we are talking about construction industry. The other areas we can see that transportation engineering is also a part of civil engineering. What changes are taking place in transportation engineering? There are any number of new research are going on in this particular field. In Kerala, we can see that uh, there are a very strong departments, transportation department in our civil engineering departments in different colleges. Many of our faculty members are expertise, so they had their PhD in transportation engineering, and they are doing a lot of consultation work also. NATPAC is another organization in our state. They are giving more importance on transportation process. Similarly, all system has changed, the curriculum has changed. Then uh, we are mainly focusing on. Uh, material, how, what are the alternative material available which can be used now? Research is going on that field. Another area is we are using the most important input source is the manpower we are using in construction field. Now we are thinking about the replacement of manpower. How we can re reduce it? 
what are the alternative source of manpower we can post that you can see that research is going on using robots in place of manpower artificial intelligence how artificial intelligence can be used for making this uh, type of robots and etc so definitely we can say that after 20 or 25 years you can see that the need of manpower is drastically reduced and in place of that we are going to place our uh, robots like that that type of research is going on in that field so we can see that uh, the topic we have selected modern trends in civil engineering and construction industry is very relevant today we can physically see what are the changes going on in this particular field civil engineering and uh, construction industries during this pandemic situation we can see that it will not to totally affected the construction field but earlier 19 before 1919 we can say uh, 2019 we can say that the construction field was field is very booming now it is affected because of the uh, pandemic situation now today we can see that it is coming up again because there is no restriction in construction process all our construction industries are uh, functioning properly and um, so we can see that this process is again coming up in academic area we can see that research is going on in iits iim and the iits nits and uh, government institution we can see that many number of new research is going on in the in the new field of construction engineering and also civil engineering and when we are coming through the list of faculty members here the experts the resource person this is a very good opportunity our our participants are getting it interact with various experts in civil engineering from abroad from uh, bombay iit or nit like that very expertise and the art architecture people also here we can see that uh, it's a combination we can say the aesthetic side of any construction process is designed by our uh, beloved architects so civil engineer is not at all completed without architects so architecture is also very important so some of the very familiar or nationally available or uh, aware people are here and uh, you are getting opportunity to interact with those people and uh, we are giving more important today for low cost construction process how we can reduce the cost of construction for that such research is also going on we have experienced such a process in our state uh, during our flood period we have constructed more than under the department itself operating academy of professional education or the corporation department itself constructed about 2500 houses with a cost of 5 lakhs or less per house that is a, a major achievement of this department with the cooperation of all civil engineering department of corporate academy of professional education we could be able to design it we could be able to plan it and we could be able to construct it using all these modern technologies that is why the cost is reduced and it comes around 5 lakhs only about 500 to 600 feet square feet house sir already constructed so that type of activities are going on in our state in any any situation how we can overcome because civil engineer is most important one for livelihood of any people in the country or in, in any place not in the country alone in any place so that is the importance of civil engineering in, in our day to day life i congratulate uh, the department of civil engineering once again for selecting a topic like this and uh, hosting a program like fdb for uh, our faculty members for improving their skills their knowledge and training program is very essential in that aspect uh, with all your permission uh, one one request to our participants definitely the participants after completing this program you could able to identify the new research areas and uh, some of your faculty members definitely select your area for research 
if you properly attend the class and interact with our experts because we are getting 16 experts in this particular field and uh, for finalizing your research area definitely such interaction is very useful for uh, uh, shaping your research problem i hope that make use of that facilities here and uh, with all your permission i hereby declare that the fdp under at actal that is um, aict training and learning process uh, modern trends in civil engineering and construction industry is uh, opened and uh, with your permission i inaugurated the program thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you sir i take this opportunity to thank dr r shashikumar sir on behalf of the civil engineering department sir is the director of our college and has provided us with the best amenities since the beginning of our college we thank you sir for providing us with the best for the development of our college and thank you also sir for being with us in spite of your busy schedule Praveen A, Registrar, APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University, Kerala, as our chief guest and keynote speaker. The keynote session will commence after the inaugural session. Now I invite heads of the various departments of College of Engineering Kerala for the festival. First, I invite Dr. Rajesh J, HOD, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. honorable director dr r sasi kumar sir beloved principal dr k g vishwanathan sir chief guest of the day dr praveen sir head of the department means dr matthew b isa dr indu p nayar ma'am dr ojas b thomas sir and the professor sunesh kuryan sir dear faculty and participants very good morning to all This is one of the happiest moment for our CEK family, as the Civil Engineering Department is organizing a FDP, particularly that is sponsored by Atal. Updating the knowledge of latest department in one field is important for any faculty, and the duty is to impart that knowledge to the students. The FDP on modern trends in civil engineering and the construction industry definitely fulfills the objective. I congratulate the organizers and wish a great success. Thank you all. Thank you, Rajesh sir. Next, for the felicitation, I would like to invite Dr. Indu P. Nair. Head of Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, College of Engineering, Kedamur. Over to you, ma'am. Respected Director K, Dr. R. Shashi Kumar Sir, Chief Guest of the Day, Registrar K T U, Dr. Praveen Sir, our Principal, Dr. K G Vishnadin Sir, H O D Civil Department, Dr. B V Matthew Sir. coordinators of the program professor bindia and professor appu delegates from various institutions and my dear friends a very warm good morning to one and all it's my pleasure pleasant privilege to speak a few words of felicitation at the inauguration of fdp on modern trends in civil engineering and construction theory transfer of knowledge through this type of fdps are one of the major function of any higher education institutions hope this fdp will enhance or will help the participants to get more insight into the new trends in construction theory and enrich their knowledge through the interaction with eminent personalities from industries and academicians so this knowledge sharing will enhance the teaching learning process to the students and in turn benefit the society I take this opportunity to congratulate our civil engineering department led by Dr. B. V. Matthew Sir for the sincere effort in organizing such FDPs in a regular manner. I wish all the success to the program. Thank you. Thank you, Manado. 
Christian Jerin, there is a small interruption. Can you can you hear me? Christy or Jerin? Ah, who are Parnol Sir? I am very interested. I am conveying the material. Okay, Christy or Jerin, uh, we we can stop the felicitations. Please invite your uh, chief guest for the de for the delivery of his address, uh, so that he can finish it. We will have to finish it before eleven o'clock. So do it now. And we can um, change the day, what of the answer ceremony at the end of uh, this session. After the delivery of uh, keynote speech, uh, speech. Okay. Uh, so please invite uh, Dr. Ravi for the session. Thank you. Okay, sir. <laughs> Now we move on to our keynote session. I'm profusely elated to take an opportunity to introduce our honorable chief guest of the day and keynote speaker, Dr. Praveen Acer. He's currently the registrar at APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University, Kerala. Prior to joining us, registrar, he was professor at Department of Civil Engineering, Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Technology, Kodain. He started his teaching career in the year 2000. Dr. Praveen sir was awarded PhD by National Institute of Technology, Calicut, and his master's and bachelor's being from University of Kerala and Calicut respectively. His research interest is in sustainability evaluation of engineering systems. He has published more than 25 papers in national and international journals and conferences. He's also actively involved in research and development and has carried out more than a dozen projects. It's our privilege to have Dr. Praveen Esel as our chief guest and keynote speaker. And now welcome Praveen sir to enlighten us with his thoughtful words. Over to you Praveen sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yes, sir. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Audible, audible. Yes. Respected Director Sashuma, sir, the Principal Vishwanathan, sir, of course, Professor Matthews, uh, and the coordinators, Bindya and uh, Apu, and all the delegates who are participating or the participants for this particular workshop. Uh, sorry, the short term training program. Uh, in short, no, it is really, you know, it should be really appreciative. You know, we can say a college uh, under Cape is organize, organizing a very leadership, a very leadership program. In short, in one of the most emerging domains in the civil engineering. Uh, so, put it briefly, because I understand we are racing against time. I, sh I would prefer to make my presentation in about twenty minutes or so. So, hence you can uh, conclude. You can still you have got a couple of. Uh, Things on agenda still in waiting. So I think my scheduled time I would most probably stop by 10:50. And I would like to have some presentations. So hence I can quickly make through those presentations. Uh, can I can sir, your support team help me? I mean, uh, can I share the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, it goes to Yeah, is it visible? Is oh, it visible? Yes, sir. Is it visible? Yes, sir. yes, yes, visible, visible. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, civil engineering. Before we start my uh, lecture, precisely, you know, when we say about modern trends, uh, there are two basic challenges this domain of civil engineering faces. First one is with respect to how it can, because as we understand the technology per se is having a tremendous growth. Uh, it is having uh, the development in the various other allied domains, especially in the domains of uh, computer science and engineering, or we can say information sciences together, which needs to be integrated into this conventional, maybe the oldest branch of engineering to enable people to decide 
uh, or maybe to have a quick decision making as well as in its uh, monitoring as well as in its restoration and all the other we can say total management of the system the other challenge the civil engineering demands or maybe faces is how to work with resources that are getting depleted so there are two challenges the modern trends have to really handle how can you enable the system to use resources in the best possible manner such that there has to be a paradigm shift in the way in which you use the resources at the same time how can i how can you make the system go along with the developments that happens in allied fields so somehow these two happen has to has to happen together now the next question that comes in is our academic system ready to deliver this from the existing mode of operation to see that such type of demands that uh, are yeah. demands that emerges are handled properly that's the challenge we as faculty members face now how can you equip our young students who pass out really understand comprehend the issue that is prevailing in this domain in this way and also ensuring that they are competent competent enough to address them effectively so your workshop definitely will be giving variety of sessions in which how this training how this uh, modern trends are really emerging in civil engineering but it all boils down what you carry home at the end how to uh, tailor it down to your day to day operations in different systems or maybe in at different institutions across the country now let us look at what is the uh, typical a couple of, i will quickly go through as i said you know we have some 20 minutes of time now science and technology as we understand has been uh, as got a root which is innovation and you got a development and in which you got different streams of engineering now unlike unlike the conventional past where you had combat compartmentalized mode of development or maybe engineering education science and technology for future has to shed its isolation you cannot say the not certain knowledge is with certain people of course certain knowledge is with certain people but there has to be an interlinkages between different knowledge domains because ultimate delivery the people who receive has to see that or maybe we collectively has to ensure that what is expected at the user level is delivered appropriately now to put it you know what are the general issues that we face you know basically if you look at you got an environmental aspect which on which the entire resources works with civil engineering i don't want to go into these details but everybody understands soil rock life and all this on the other side we have got the other things the over operation side we got a huge population and of course the economics you got rich poor everyone has to be accommodated with their need and of course world views and ethics you know which drives the operation and of course the politics the viewpoints of governance which takes the role so that's what drives and which ultimately see that uh, your resources are how and manner in which they are used engineers have to understand this you should have a good overview of the human culture sphere you should have a good understanding of a non sphere and that with the connects of these two is what civil engineering is for tomorrow or maybe even if we have address something we have to relook into all how can your technology as well as the other aspects can clearly be interlinked such that the best outcomes comes so we have to look at your curriculum per se and everything is it really on the right mode again moving into the thinking process basically design of various systems so normal engineering is designed we normally say the engineering is a design process for normal design of various systems takes place now there are three aspects which we normally look at when you design things first one is geometry no what is the configuration that you really require be it mechanical electrical civil or whatever so you need to look up with a certain geometry to meet a certain function for which you got certain set of materials which you need to tailor down to see that appropriate geometry which you have chosen for a for each type of geometry maybe some other material will be feasible so and of course the mechanisms mechanisms means what are the various demands that you place on the material as well as geometry to get the intended function so these three aspects from the perspective of design has to be very clear in the mind of our students so when you say the modern trends modern trends has to see that whether which all aspects of the trends we are setting in and what are the systems that you propose has to ensure being a civil engineering hardcore engineering branch we have to propose we have to see whether how what is the different strategies that you try to evolve in evolving appropriate geometry to meet the best use of materials such that your geometry and materials are able to deliver the appropriate mechanisms or appropriate functions that the engineering demands that you that you expect 
So this is how general thought process that people have to undergo. And we have to see that how our students are getting integrated in this thinking process through various courses that we deliver to them. This is just in particular illustration which I gave you in order to explain the structural aspect. You see, this is a very is a long is a bridge which is uh, constructed into an uh, we can say water body. We can see it can be an ocean or whatever it is. If you look at the micro level of this, these are all tiny members. <clears throat> see, you see a small triangles which is connected connected together such that it gives the structure. So it is not a single structure. It's a multitude of small components which is try to enable the design. Or unable to try to function. So we have to look at this is what I try to uh, tell you. Uh, your configuration. Maybe if you ask what is the basic configuration which you have looked at, uh, basic configuration which we have looked at, perhaps uh, maybe uh, the configuration would not have been a massive structure. Configuration is a very small tube. It has been connected together to give what the entire function is. So these type of thought process. Praveen, sir, that. Uh, Slide yeah. show. Can you please make it? Uh, your slide is not moving. But it's moving here. For me, there's no problem. Uh, uh, ah, yeah. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Sir, can you uh, put in a slide show mode? Okay. Is it okay now? It's not in slide show mode. Slide show mode. Yeah. It's a slide show mode. Yeah. I'll put it. How is it now? Slides are uh, changing, but it is slideshow mode. It's in slideshow mode. It's in slideshow mode for me. Okay. Are you seeing the slides? Yeah, yeah. Continue, continue, sir. Okay, now okay. That's better. That's better. That's better. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So if you look at uh, if you look at this structure which I've shown you here. Uh, if you view uh, very closely, it is the structure or the system. The strength is achieved by using a innumerable number of small triangles. It's a very thin member, but smaller, very large number of triangles has been stitched around and has been arranged, and the geometry has given the required strength and stability. So, rather than looking at the design, now if you look at the total material per se, might be less, very less. But the demand structure has been the demand of the structure has been brought in, has been done. Okay, so this is the way in which things have worked, and this is how uh, engineering thinking you should have or, uh, how we can evolve our design in the thought process of property. Now, this is something which I have said is the engineering analysis in a different mechanism which you try to look at when each type of material take it can be under stress or it can be uh, sorry under tension, shear, or whatever it is. And of course, even if you take a small design material of high strength epoxy adhesives, you see, we want to bond two materials together. All these mechanisms have to go into this adhesive to make it work. Right. So this is how the role of engineering design, engineering thought process, when you try to look for multitude of solutions which are not conventionally present. Now, this is something which I would like to uh, just show you. This is spongy-like configuration. Uh, the density is very low, 5%. Strength is 10 times that of steel. Okay, if you look at this, the design, so you see the material consumption has come down tremendously. Strength has gone 10 times of the steel. It is 3D printed, as you know, uh, it has gone into different types of production process. But ultimately, test, uh, having a very high quality uh, mechanical property, high strength and mechanical properties, uh, and it's very lightweight. So you see the. Sir, are you, Sir, are you changing slides? Yes, yes. No. Visible in oh, oh. now it is visible. I think it might be possible that we have shared a window. Okay, uh, this is matter. This matter. Yeah, it's okay. We'll go ahead. Five or ten minutes. I'll just try to be visible for you. Yes, sir. Now it is okay. Okay, please. Okay, so now you see in this case, so what we're trying to tell you was you got lightweight materials. So the, the philosophy of this discussion, or maybe this explanation is like this. Maybe if you are asked, maybe uh, is a small mud block better energy, uh, better material, or the most modern recent material that are available, lightweight materials like aerocon blocks, which is better. So how do you evaluate? When you try to take a 
detailed evaluation of a life cycle mode, uh, you see uh, your density wise, you might get a higher strength from a lightweight material on a aerocon production. Maybe when you take a stabilized block, it, it might be a direct earth which will block, which may, maybe energy input that you're given might be low and you might, it might sound very environment friendly. But since density is quite high, the quantity of material which is required when you take out a larger period of time might be larger. So when you take on a larger spread of evaluation, maybe a life cycle based evaluation or a larger span of evaluation, materials which we intuitively feel is very uh, environment friendly may not sound so. All these are all these decisions can be taken only if more sophisticated analysis or thought process are uh, initiated in our design and evaluation process. So when you talk about different again, this is also adding more value, adding more thought into your modern trends. In, even in thinking selection of materials, design approaches, and also in overall decision making, quite different from what we have made from the past. Now, when you look at the geometry, see, this is the material. If, if you take a small member, you see, you've got a three member. If you apply a force on a triangle, they are more stable. So, if you have a certain force to be taken into account, not large, large number of materials may not be uh, the kind of, uh, maybe you, you are, if you really want to limit yourself to the consumption of the materials. So you see, three member can give the appropriate, uh, appropriate stability with an right configuration. Just to illustrate that, you know, you can limit, you can create appropriate geometry. Now your thought of an appropriate geometry for a stability condition or for a strength condition becomes very important. If you really understand the connect between the geometry, material and design. Now when it comes to this, let us say, you say you are confined to certain geometry. You can't change the geometry. And now you have certain material alone. You, you are also constra uh, construct, uh, I mean, uh, constrained with a certain choice of materials. What do you do? Then you have to see how can you enable that geometry to perform to that. So then you create small gazettes like this, which I have shown in this figure. So you use the same geometry, same materials with a small connects. So that means you get, you get a better uh, response from the same materials and same geometry, but with a different engineering approach. So these are all things that are happening only if we have a real understanding of how the engineering system has to be developed or maybe how it can be proposed. Now, these are one of the factors which we have been, uh, all these I put in some words and maybe I can share the slide with your uh, coordinator so hence I can share with you. We can read through uh, uh, during uh, your leisure. Okay, these are also, we are trying to tell you what indigenous technology should be doing. So all this is a summation of what I have discussed. And now coming back to make you really feel how what what does it mean when it comes to a real design? So these are these are all small uh, sheeting uh, sheets or we can say corrugated sheets which normally use a roofing system. The sheets are maybe we can say uh, they are uh, they are orthotropic in it. They are orthotropic in its response. That means uh, they are not isotropic. That means their response is not same in all the directions. So, but for a systems to be used in a conventional mode and for a typical roofing system, we need to make it orthotropic. Sorry, isotropic. So, hence, how can you make it enable? So, you try to increase stiffening. This is a geometric change we are trying to incorporate and we are trying to see how the things can perform better. Now, your sheeting systems can work better. Uh, you can have a lightweight material which can, uh, which can be readily uh, installed in the field uh, and also can be, uh, uh, maybe we can have more intelligent incorporations also, which I have been talking, uh, uh, which I have been communicating, which I'll demonstrate later. So now, uh, so thinking, you know, so in this case, what I try to put it in a couple of words, the thinking is no substitute for information, okay? Just because of you have information, that means you can avoid to think, never. Data is to analyze. The moment you know what to analyze, and that, that aspect is more critical. What to analyze? Data is available. Tools are there available. Available tools are there to undertake into maybe more deeper analysis. But ultimately, for what? What information required is our job. So that is no substitute. Thinking is no substitute. So I'll just quickly move to the next slide. This is just a general discussion. So of course, of course, you are having, a, as I told you, know, you are competing against resources. We need to have more resources. So now, see, it is like this. General design of systems. You need to have choice of materials, your configuration related things, and you should have uh, more of a better production systems. And also you have uh, data sensors and analytics to give us a small, uh, small responses. 
Now, when it comes to the field, now when it comes to the applications, okay. See, this is what uh, this is what what we have uh, tried to show earlier. See, normal building systems can we make so now when when, when you have an engineering systems, your engineering systems uh, are now responsive engineering systems. They are able to tell what you want and how they do. Can we make civil engineering system responsive? So these are all single as uh, these material which are shown earlier, which we uh, which can be which are placed over the roof. Okay, now they are single monolithic piece which is getting spread across the roof. Normal material, we are not adapting. Uh, your technology is not replacing the local labor, but technology is making uh, enabling the local labor to use advances in systems. You can have some sensors integrated into the structural components, so they are able to respond, give you. Uh, a trajectory of the stress states that they have undergone in the past. So you don't have to be intuitive to understand how the systems respond in structures. They can give you the history of what it is. So this is what is meant by data analytics in structural systems. You can incorporate them. These are new challenges that we are trying to do. So these are our students and people can be able to understand and implement. So these are also the models which you can use. So just to give some confidence that it is possible at engineering colleges, which people can try to do. So this is how things try to, this is how things are happening. Okay, so this is how uh, things are moving in the uh, domain now. All your developments that we have been talking, whatever we have tried to uh, explain, or maybe whatever your uh, course try to envisage in the few days ahead, will be similar type of thought process that has been happening in the diverse domains of civil engineering protection and uh, management. Our interest would be to see that, you know, what in your local situations, what in local emergence, what is the ideal component that you can tailor out and implement them in the operations. And also to add them in the pedagogy such that our students can be trained a better way. So hope this short term course would uh, help you to get enriched, to understand what are the finer components that you will carry back to your institutions uh, and also to improve upon the curriculum and the uh, pedagogic strategies that you adopt such that the development that the industry needs for tomorrow, as I told two things right at the start, we have technology that has been developed uh, and they're ready to be embraced in the civil engineering domain, especially in the information sciences, data analytics, which need to be integrated to see, to improve upon the services as well as to improve upon the design. And also the shortages of material that we try to experience, shortage of materials that we experience. Uh, which we try to, uh, shortage of materials that we experience such that, you know, more resource efficiency has to be integrated, for which your basic thinking of engineering has to be strengthened. These two components has to be uh, kept in the mind in any of the modern trends that we try to uh, incorporate. So I'm sure this will be a good opportunity for all the faculty members across the country who will be connected to, to our uh, College of Engineering workshop. Thank you very much for having provided me the opportunity. With these words at me close, I think it's 10.50. Uh, it's ideal time for you to look forward to all that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this. I am the civil engineer of the College of Engineering Kedangur. Extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our chief guest. And keynote speaker, Dr. Praveen Asa, for accepting our invitation and taking the valuable time uh, in spite of your busy schedule. So, there, I, I'm very sure that our participants and our audience have, uh, have also been, uh, have, uh, been attracted by the interesting talk and uh, the thoughts that Sir has uh, uh, shared about how we can enter systems to accommodate in the some of the things that we've seen as working and how we can effectively adapt this pedagogy to absorb the modern trends in civil engineering and construction industry. I once again thank you, Sir. Now, for the vote of thanks, I invite Professor Bindya Haripi. Assistant Professor, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, to uh, to provide the vote of thanks. Thank you, Jerry. Respected uh, Director of K, Dr. R. Shashikumar Sir, Distinguished Guest, Dr. Praveen A. Sir, Principal, Dr. K. G. Vishnathan Sir, Head of the Department, Dr. B. V. Matthew Sir, Heads of other departments, colleagues, 
and dear participants a very good morning to all of you it is my privilege to deliver the vote of thanks for the inaugural session of this fdp first and foremost i thank our director dr r shashikumar sir who despite of his busy schedule has found time to grace this occasion and for delivering the inaugural address i express my heartfelt thanks to our principal dr k g vishnadan sir for his words of encouragement and support for this function and for delivering the presidential address next i would like to thank dr praveen a honorable registrar of apj abdul kalam technological university for joining us for the keynote session now i would like to thank our head of the department dr b v matthew sir for his guidance constant inspiration and support in organizing this faculty development program we are grateful to you sir for always encouraging us my heartfelt thanks to the heads of other departments and faculties for their guidance and encouragement in all our efforts i thank all my colleagues especially professor apupi all of us have worked hard together to ensure that this occasion becomes a memorable success on behalf of department of civil engineering college of engineering kidangur we are extremely thankful to all the participants who have joined us from different parts of our nation i also thank all the faculty members of aict atal academy for giving us an opportunity sanctioning this program once again i thank you all for your kind attention thank you thank you